Hello, I'm back. So here we are. Uh, we're gonna. This is gonna be our first little bit about the uh, uh, geometric series and sums of geometric series. Our first video here, and this one in particular is gonna focus on what are called um, uh, finite series. Okay. Now, so we're gonna be working with at first what are called a finite. geometric series right now specifically the finite means that there are a certain set number of terms like 10 or 8 or 27 or even like a billion or something uh, there's just there's a certain number and in principle even if there's a lot of terms you could simply add them up using the formulas you, uh, you could simply add them up to get the sum of the series, right? Okay, in your book, if you're looking at your book, uh, uh, the sum of a finite, the finites, the sum of a finite series is also referred to as a partial sum. And we'll see why that is in a little bit. Okay, but anyway, so when we did, when we worked the sums of arithmetic series, okay, we always worked with finite series. You were told to add up you know, eight terms in the series or nine terms or 10 terms or whatever it was, and you could get a sum, okay? Now, not in this video, but the third video for this morning, we're gonna be working with what are called infinite series, okay? And they have some interesting properties we'll get to next, okay? But in any case, uh, so that's kind of, kind of how it worked, right? And remember what we did, and we just had this in the homework review. If you read that for number for number 18, you're finding that, that finding the sum of the first nine terms of this arithmetic series, which is a which is which is um which is a partial sum, which is a finite series, okay? Now it looked kind of in general, it looked like this, right? You're given in sigma notation, one up to say 12. And then we had a formula here. For the first one it was, for number 18 was 6m minus one. But in general, you understand, in order to write the our geometric, or rather our arithmetic series, we had the sigma notation here, and it told us how many terms we were adding up, and then the first, and then whatever the formula for the series was, and that should actually be an n there, because that's just whatever n representing whatever, however many numbers in the series we want to add up, right? Okay. So we're going to do the same th kind of thing for geometric series. So this is the arithmetic series here. notation right and then we had not one but two formulas to actually calculate that sum well if we're working with a geometric series it's the same kind of a thing okay sec you know except the 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 general term the term for the, the what we call the explicit formula the general the, the formula for the general term in a geometric series is given by this formula here where g1 was the first term in the series and r was that common multiplier or rather we called it a common ratio right and so we said, well, okay, a geometric series might look like this. Or a geometric sequence, or we're going to write a sequence first, okay, might look like this. And here's one we've actually used several times. So there is our geometric series, I mean geometric sequence. That's a sequence. And you can see, how do we know that it's a geometric sequence? Well, because... It has a common a common ratio, right? If we divided each neighboring pair, the subsequent by the previous, 6 divided by 3, 12 divided by 6, 24 divided by 12, 48 divided by 24, and so on, each of those had the common ratio of 2. So that gave us the R was equal to 2. With arithmetic series or sequences, we would subtract. With geometric series and sequences, we divide. 
to get the common ratio. And this R here was the R that goes into the formula. And three, that's the first term in the, in this, in this sequence here. And that goes in the, in, in the first, in the G1 position there. And so this is dot, dot, dot. The sequence goes all the way up to whatever, you know, G sub N would be, right? Okay, the last, the final term in the, in the series. I mean, in the sequence. Now, the series would be, it's unfortunate that they both start with S. The series would look like this, right? Use blue here. So the series that corresponds to that geometric sequence would look like this, right? We're going to add those terms together up until the nth term, right? Whatever that is. And as long as this is a finite series, as long as we have a certain set number of terms that we're adding up here, there'll always be a sum, right? And it turns out that uh, there is a handy dandy formula for the uh, sum of a series, and that is this. And I'll put it in purple here, I think. S sub n, S for sum, is g1 times... 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. Okay, and this is, there's only one formula for geometric series, and this would give us the sum of this series. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to do this series here, and then we'll do, we wanted to find the sum of this series here. Well, that's supposed to be... That's supposed to be a 6. 6, 12, 24, 48, just like that. So we're adding up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms in the series. So n is going to be 5. Okay, r is still equal to 2, right? And the first term in the series is still 3. So now we employ this formula here, all right? I'll use red for this. S sub 5, because we're adding up the first five terms in the series, 3 times 1 minus 2 to the fifth power divided by 1 minus 2. Okay? So that's, that's how that's going to go. Okay, and now we just go ahead and we let the calculator do the rest, right? So this is going to be um, 3 times 1, one 2 to the 5th power is 32. So 1 minus 32 over negative 1. So this is 3 times negative 31 divided by negative 1. And as you can see, that's going to work out to be 3 times 31, and the negatives cancel, 93. And if you add those numbers just straight, you'll see that they add up to 93. Okay? So that's how that goes. Okay, so that's so we'll just do a couple more examples like that. We're finding sums of series, right? Right. So here. So this is going to be. We'll let that be example one there. Okay. So what if you've got this series here? I'll put this aside. Okay. What if you've got this is going to be example two? Okay. And we're using the same formula here. I'm going to write it again at the top of the page. It is S sub n is g one times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. You're asking, do these cancel out? No, they don't. It'd have to have an n on the outside there in order to be able to cancel it. Okay, so there's, there's no common factors here. Okay, so example two, let's say we've got this series here, 3 plus 15 plus 75 plus... 375 
plus dot dot dot. I'm going to write g of 10. So what we're going to ask to do is we're going to add up the first 10 terms in that series. Okay, so let's see here. So what do we need to know? We need to know the first term. Well, that's three. We need to know R, the common difference, right? I mean, the common ratio. So we're just going to divide here the first two terms. So it's 15 divided by three. Well, that's five or 75 divided by 15, which is also five. For any pair that we're given here, we divide the, 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 the second term by the first term. So R is equal to 5, right? And G1 is equal to um, 3. And N, we said we wanted the first 10 terms, right? So uh, S sub N or S sub 10 is going to be equal to 3 times 1 minus 5 to the 10th power over 1 minus 5, all right? Now, this is definitely calculator work, so I have no idea what 5 to the 10th power is, but 5 exponent 10 is, uh, so it's going to be 3 times 1 minus 976, 5, 6, to 5 according to Mr. Calculator all over negative 4 so 1 minus that is 3 times negative 976 5 6 2 4 suppose we should put some commas in there right divided by negative 4 right so now Now I'm going to multiply it by 3 on top and then divide it by negative 4. And that comes out to be 7, 3, 2, 4, 2, 1, 8. According to Mr. Calculator, just like that. Okay. All right, so that's how that goes. Now we could have it. Now here's another one. Here's another, here's another geometric series. We'll try to give you some different looks here. What if it had been, let's just pretend, negative 3 plus 15 minus 75 plus 375 plus dot 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 all the way up to whatever G10 was. Well, notice the plus minus, we see that kind of flip-flopping positive and negative when it's a geometric series, when the common ratio is negative, okay? So in this case, 15 divided by negative 3 or negative 75 divided by positive 15, either way, you understand that comes out to be negative 5. So here, R is equal to negative 5, right? G1 is equal to negative 3, and N is still equal to 10, right? So we still, you know, we still use the formula the same way, right? Purple for contrast here. S sub 10 is equal to negative 3, 1 minus, and I'm going to write negative 5 to the 10th power, divided by 1 minus negative 5. Notice that same thing, except instead of 5, I'm going to have negative 5. And notice I put the negative 5 in parentheses here, because we want to raise this to the 10th power, then we'll do the subtraction. Okay? So, order of operations. So, negative 5 to the 10th power as it happens, is still going to be, because it's an even exponent, is still going to be um, the same thing it was before. 9, 7, 6, 5, 6, 2, 5, right? Because that's a common, so this 
works out to be positive 976. And then this is going to be 6 on the bottom, right? Because 1 minus negative 5 is 6. So then uh, this is going to be negative 3 times negative 976, 5, 6, 2, 4 again, divided by uh, 6, right? So let's see what that comes out to be negative 3 times negative 976, 5, 6, 2, 4, right? And then divided by 6. And notice here, this is negative times negative is positive. And then we're dividing by positive on the bottom. So we've got 4, 8, 2, 8, 1, 2. Right? Oh, look, this sum was less than that sum. I wonder why. Okay, so that's that. And then we can also... Uh, there is a just I'm going to make up a series that looks like this. Um, so I'll put that aside. We'll do um, how about this one right here? What if it's example four? What if it's negative? What if it's say negative two? What if we see a series that looks like this? Negative two, negative four, minus eight, minus sixteen, minus thirty-two. Let's say. Okay, so. That doesn't look like a series at all, but notice that really we're adding a negative. This is really negative 2 plus negative 4 plus negative 8 plus negative 16 plus negative, two, negative 32. So what we're doing is written in this kind of simplified way. So we're adding up a whole series of negative numbers instead of positive ones. So that's okay. So we're still going to do it the same way, right? You can see that g1, that's equal to negative 2. r is going to be equal to negative 4 divided by negative 2 or negative 8 divided by negative 4. Either way, comes out to be positive 2, doesn't it, right? Because each time we're multiplying to get from negative 3 2 to negative 4 to negative 8 to negative 16, each time we're actually multiplying by positive 2. So the common, even though these are all negative, the common ratio is still positive. Okay? All right. And we're adding up, oops, I forgot to say this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're adding up five terms in a series. So n is equal to 5, right? And so s sub 5 is going to be uh, negative 2 times 1 minus... 2 to the fifth power over 1 minus 2. Okay? See how that goes? Okay, so this is 2 to the fifth power is still 32. So that's going to be negative 2 times negative 31 divided by negative 1. Okay? Okay. I do that right? Yes, I, I think so. Assuming my arithmetic is correctly, this should come out okay. So that's negative times negative is positive 62 divided by negative 1. Oh, look, the sum comes out to be negative, negative 62, right? Why, is, why would it come out to be negative? Because as you can see, we're adding up several negative numbers. Negative 2 plus negative 4 plus negative 8 plus negative 16 plus negative 32 comes out to be negative 62. Yeah. Okay. So one more example on this, and then I'm, I'll, I'll end this video here. Example five. Um, what if they give it to you in, um, oh, in sigma form? So something like this. Uh, uh, n equals one up to five, and it's going to be oh, let's say three to the n. Okay, so that is our that that is our geometric series written in sigma notation. We're adding up the first five terms of the series from one up to five, where each term is generated by this general formula here, which is three to the n. So maybe you can see that. Um, you know, the first term would be 3 to the 1, the second term would be 3 to the 2, the third term would be 3 to the 3, up to 
the fifth term, which would be 3 to the 5. Well, we're going to employ the same formula, right? S sub n is equal to g1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And I think what I'll do is uh, pretty soon I'm going to send out a like a, a general, like a, a summary sheet with all of the formulas on it so you know which formulas you're supposed to know. Okay. Um, so that's that. So that's G1 there. So G1, as you can see, is going to be 3. 1 minus. Maybe you can see that this is 3, 9, 27, dot, 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 plus whatever 3 to the 5th power is. That's ooh, 243 up to 243. So maybe you can see that the common multiplier here is going to be 3, right? Because 9 divided by 3 is 3. 27 but divided by 9 is 3, right? So this is going to be 3 to the 5th power because we're adding up 5 terms divided by 1 minus 3, right? Okay, so, so, so. That's 3 times 1 minus 3 to the 5th power, that's 243, divided by negative 2, right? And then careful, right? That's negative, that's 3 times negative 242, divided by negative 2. So 3 times 242 is equal to that divided by negative 2, we get negative, uh-oh, oh, positive 363, because negative divided by negative is positive. So the first five terms of this series would add up to 363. Okay, so that's example five. So I think that's enough to get on with. I'm going to let you go. All right, and there'll be one more video after this about infinite geometric series. Stay tuned.